instant regret. Woke Twitter is furious that Minions, the rise of Gru, destroyed Lightyear. Being a right-wing weirdo rules because you don't have to be attached to reality at all to win online. You can claim it's a huge victory for your side that the second Minions movie made slightly less than the first one because imaginary woke people hate it or ever. We are going to be talking about Minions. Now, Minions are hugely popular as like this cultural phenomenon. These really, really annoying yellow characters are used by every Facebook mum in all these really, really bad memes. And of course, coming from Despicable Me, they have spun off into their own series. Now with Minions, I kind of see them as a ripoff of the Raving Rabbids, who have made a bit of a comeback lately with the Mario Raving Rabbids games, but they essentially serve the same purpose. They can kind of be used for anything, but they all act like pretty eccentric. Did you ever think these stupid characters in a children's movie would be used as part of a right-wing culture war? I am probably surprised that they're using this specific movie but perhaps I shouldn't be, because they also did this with Sonic the Hedgehog, who allegedly made feminists furious on Twitter, because Sonic the Hedgehog did better than DC's more mature Birds of Prey, because both these films can't succeed at the same time. And that is kind of why they like Minions as well. They like Minions because apparently it's non-woke, and it's doing better than Lightyear which is totally woke, and that's why children didn't like it and people didn't run out to the cinemas to see it. No other reasons, they just didn't like the wokeness of the film. So I've been covering anti ashws a lot in the last couple of weeks. I think this will probably be my last one for a while, unless they do something so stupid. But I, like, I wrote on Twitter on Saturday, I think, I was like, this is so bizarre. I'm just going to have to make a video talking about minions. But anyway, before we go any further, like the video in the comments. I guess the question for today will be, what is the most bizarre thing you've seen them politicize? I would say this is, or Sonic the Hedgehog, but there could be something I'm completely unaware of, of how they just politicize the most random things and invent some narrative that doesn't exist to justify their clickbait videos. Also, to support my work continuing for the future, please consider becoming a patron. I want to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible, and the benefits of that are getting access to my Nintendo Switch friend code and the private patrons Discord server. For every 5k, we get a new chocolate orange. Help me reach 80k so we can finally put the new one up here. I'm trying to hit 80k before I go to Vietnam, because sadly, I cannot bring the chocolate oranges with me. Also follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter, on Instagram. Check out my second channel, The Cavernacle Extra, where I archive my live streams, which I generally do two times a week. So if I'm gonna talk about my own exposure to minions and my own opinion on them first, I find them like really, really annoying. And I don't think they're cute or that unique. Like I said, I think they're just like the Raven Rabbids. I will say I can see why they've gotten popular and why so many people supposedly love them including children they're just loud and stupid and there's loads of them and you can keep changing the design of them giving them different outfits and a sort of gibberish like sim language i guess appeals to children as well i've never really watched the movies i think i may have watched despicable me one only like in passing in terms of maybe walking past the room when my you know sister was watching it as a kid but generally it can't say i am a fan of this stuff and we are going to be talking about gentleman minions or whatever that stupid hashtag is as well in this video but i thought it'd be fun first is let's get to the video in the tweet we were talking about so there's a guy called yellow fash 2 who is just like a pretty generic anti sjw youtuber fairly popular as they all are kind of fairly popular now he has been making videos about this stuff He's not the only one, so don't worry, we're going to get to all of them. But I wanted to start with him. So I just want to show you both these videos and talk about them. Minions Rise of Gru doing very well, very well in the theaters right now. And the reason that I think that's hilarious is because this could have been light year. It easily could have been light year. But no, you decided to have the movie revolve around a bunch of bull and you did it to yourself. Minions, The Rise of Gru, review, feeble origin story, hopefully lays franchise to rest. So hopefully this kills the Minions franchise, according to Peter Bradshaw from The Guardian. Two out of five stars. I wonder what The Guardian gave Lightyear. Let's take a look from the same guy. Four out of five stars. <laughs> Lightyear review. 
Toy Story spinoff, boldly going beyond with a treat from Pixar. I wonder what's going on with that. Look at that. Oh, buy as much. And, and I wonder, I wonder why it's getting four out of five stars. Could it be the LBGTQ plus representation? Looks like it is a plot point or a plot thing that was, it was a five second thing. Literally a blink and you miss it kiss as a reason to give this movie four out of five stars. This is what boosts your movies now. This is why people don't trust critics, number one. So that is the first one. And I find it funny that in these anti SW nerd channels minds, that someone giving The Rise of Gru a bad score, but giving Lightyear a good score, and because they mentioned the LGBT thing briefly, that means that's the only reason they've done that. Like a professional film critic who writes for The Guardian, probably seen thousands of movies. There's no way they could have felt that Rise of Gru, even as a children's movie, wasn't that good, and Lightyear was better. There's no way they could have thought that, right? It has to all be down to that one blink and you'll miss it kiss scene in Lightyear. Aren't you the same people complaining about this scene? If it's so blink and you'll miss it, why have you guys churned out so many videos about it, outraged about it, saying how Disney is being subversive to family values and all this other right-wing crap. Even if I was a parent and I had kids, I would much rather than watch Lightyear because Pixar generally make higher quality children's movies that appeal to adults, while everything put out by Illumination is just designed to be really, really loud and noisy and annoying, I would absolutely hate to sit through that as an adult, I get why children like it, but if there's something that can appeal to both children and adults, as Pixar films often do, I don't find it really unbelievable that someone could find Lightyear a higher quality movie than the second Minion spin-off. So obviously I showed you he was getting quote tweeted a lot on Twitter. By the way, this is the same guy who is scared that they're gonna ruin um, the District 9 sequel by making it political. He made a follow-up video just coping with all the backlash. So I'm gonna show you this and we'll talk about it. Wow, I noticed people were very upset <laughs> with my post on Twitter, not the actual video, because they just liked my very, very good thumbnail. That thumbnail has pushed this video to heights. I didn't think that it was going to go to. In fact, I went and checked the quote tweets out, actually. In the video, the purpose of this was to point out, and we're going to do it again today, that Lightyear is a complete failure, and this Minions movie is not a failure. And the reason that it's not a failure is because it didn't focus on any kind of political nonsense, and it got families to go to the theaters, whereas Lightyear focused on political nonsense, causing it to fail spectacularly. And instead of focusing on that three-second kiss that's in the movie, maybe you could have made a better trailer that actually told people why they should go see this movie. So I went and looked at the quote tweets, and we can play a little game. We can check the profiles. Let's check a couple of them. It's leftist Gorgira. Oh, he, him, they... He, him, she, her, he, him. A lot of movies out there making money. Now, from what I hear, there is some stuff in Rise of Gru, but guess what? It, it's, it's not. It's not at the front of the movie, and they're not making a huge deal about it. And because of that, people actually went to watch it, and it's probably going to be quite successful. The thing that I'm talking about, I guess there's a, a minion that has a they-them guard. Was it in the trailer? No. The point is, let your tanked. Because they made the marketing machine for that movie based around its politics. All right. So first of all, I wanted to say something about the they them uh, thing in Minions. So apparently it's from a 4chan post where someone wrote, the new Minions movie has a moment where it shows one of the Minions identification cards and it says pronouns they them. Now, I've been looking everywhere on the internet. I really don't know if this is true or not. A lot of people are saying it's not true while some other people are saying it's just a really small visual thing in the background. I don't know. If you've seen it, please let me know in the comments. But I do find it funny that Yellow Fash has accepted this as fact, basically. He's saying, oh yeah, I know there's this in the movie. But then he goes through making fun of everyone's pronouns who's criticizing him for having like pronouns in their bio, right? So at the same time, you're also saying that Lightyear is so bad and woke for a gay kiss scene You've also made in this video, and to your mind, there's actually 
pronouns in the Minions movie. Like, they have non-binary pronouns. While at the same time, promoting this film as something great because it's anti-woke and making fun of people for having pronouns in their bio. Have I got that right? Is that the consistent logic of anti SJWs? Minions is a great film for all the family. Lightyear is subversive garbage, which is trying to push a political agenda for, in this guy's words, a blink and you'll miss it kiss scene, but something with gender pronouns apparently is non-woke and great. Again, I'm not saying either of these things are woke, if that even means anything anymore, but surely if you're such a zealot, you think a tiny little same-sex kiss in a Pixar movie is just so outrageous. Surely you'd think a Minions having a name tag with they them pronouns would also be outrageous. It seems like it comes from the same place to you guys. It's leftist subversion. So why aren't you calling this out? It's because they're constructing a stupid narrative. And we'll get back to that a bit later uh, with the Sonic the Hedgehog versus Birds of Prey, which was even more ridiculous. Like, the only thing I will say about this is, of course, they are two children's movies and they're competing for a similar audience. One has done well, one has done bad. But to them, the conclusion is this has done bad because of one same sex kissing scene and Minions has done great because there's none of that woke garbage in there. So I'm always curious about the types of people who consume this content and think it like makes any sense, but I thought you'd appreciate some of the YouTube comments because they made me laugh a lot, also a bit depressed, but I thought they're worth sharing. This one is funny and show how far Russell Brand has fallen. I'm glad that Russell Brand, who voiced Dr. Nefario, is also exposing the corruption that goes on in the woke era I'll definitely go see Rise of Gru, hopefully. I've made videos about Russell Brand's like downfall from actually being a principled leftist, but that is funny. Remember when the Minions were universally hated and everyone said their very existence was a reflection of a soulless corporation shoveling content just for money? Yep, that is still 100% true. <laughs> How the tables have turned. No, that is still true. Just because you prefer that form of soulless corporate garbage does not mean the tables have turned at all. Being woke seems to cause a lot of individual rage. Why would anyone want to live like that? This person says where these people all invent made up narratives to get angry about because they feel like leftists are ruining their movies. I watched Minions today and I didn't see anything woke in it. I'm highly sensitive to that stuff by now. If there was a they tag on a Minion, that's definitely weird, but I didn't even see it. Just some good city fun. Pretty wholesome. This one is just really sad. My husband and I are over 40, deliberately went to see Minions because it wasn't woke. How depressing, how depressing. Putting yourself through that garbage. Can you imagine two 40 year olds legit going to see Minions because it's not garbage and they don't have any children with them? Minions wasn't the best movie, but it was a hell of a lot of mindless fun, which is what we wanted. Happy to see my money was well spent. <laughs> okay, well done. You're giving a uh, garbage corporation money uh, to own the wokies like me. I'm so offended. More stupid comments. When I watch a movie, I don't want it to be political. I watch a movie for stories, enjoyment, and escape in reality. I don't want to see stuff that scolds me and pushes their agenda on me. How come none of them have the brains to know that? I don't know what films this person watches, but I'm sure, you know, the new Daily Wire output would be good for them. So I didn't really know where to throw this part in, but obviously um, geeks and gamers are jumping on this minion stuff and making videos about it to attack Disney because they hate Disney for their political agenda. Um, and how they destroyed Star Wars. Uh, I just want to play you some of it just to show you how angry and sad these people are. Minions The Rise of Gru has completely owned it at the box office and completely embarrassing Lightyear, a failure at the box office. There's one stark difference between these two films, and that is in one film I didn't hear the star of the film, at least the fake star of the film, talking down to the audience and trying to preach because... That's exactly how you destroy any momentum that you may have because Chris Evans found out the hard way that he's not actually a legitimate movie star. But congratulations to uh, the Minions film for doing very well at the box office. Happy to see Universal, uh, who seems to be, for the time being, you know, generally speaking, staying out of the political agenda driven stuff. Minions Rise of Gru smashes July 4th box office records with $127.9 million opening.
When Disney decided to change the voice of Tim Allen as Buzz Lightyear, replace him with Chris Evans. When they decided to bend the knee to woke activists within their company and insert identity politics into Lightyear. And then the cherry on top was when Chris Evans decided to attack the fans, call you idiots if you don't agree with the agenda that Disney's pushing. That was a misstep. And as a result, Lightyear is failing and flopping while Minions, geared towards the same demographic, same audience, is absolutely surging. The thing that all the analysts have been refusing to look at, that Disney drove people away. They drove people away by changing the voice actor because Tim Allen's just too conservative to be a part of this. They drove audiences away by getting so involved in the state of Florida and pushing anti-family rhetoric. And they made massive mistakes by deciding to listen to a fringe minority of woke activists within their company instead of trying to appeal to the masses. As a result... This movie is set to lose maybe about $200 million. So very, very uh, predictable and all this stuff about how Disney never like panners to the fans and linking it to stuff with Florida's politics as well because these people want to indoctrinate young people in Republican politics. Do you ever think we'd see a time uh, where conservative nerd channels are using the Minions movie to try and push a political agenda to make people more right wing because they're trying to create this narrative that movies do well when they don't have politics and movies do bad when they have left wing politics despite historically, especially since the 1970s, many of the best movies of all time being at least created by liberals, many times created by leftists, including their favorite franchise, Star Wars, created by a leftist, Ridley Scott creating um, Alien and Blade Runner, James Cameron uh, making Aliens, I wouldn't say this is like a fan favorite, but Avatar as well, which have fairly progressive messaging that these people all grow up liking, but suddenly the left ruin everything. Also, a lot of these guys are into anime. Again, some of the best anime is made by left-wing people as well. But again, it's just a very, very bizarre narrative they have constructed with this Minions thing. And I hope stuff like this, actually, as part of their insane culture war, wakes people up to them just being really disingenuous. Like, do you think these people care about either of these movies? Do you think they're ever going to see them? Do you really think they feel that a same-sex kiss, which apparently lasts only one second, is really going to ruin you know, everything, is really going to brainwash young children? I guess if you're extremely bigoted against LGBT people, which these people claim they're not, then maybe you would, but at the end of the day, it's so insignificant that most people will miss it the same way that name tag thing, if it even exists in Minions, seems to be pretty insignificant. But what we spoke about so far, the main thing of this video, is the politicization of the Minions movie, which is more bizarre and inherently funny than the suit thing, because it's just absolutely ridiculous and stupid, and you have to live in fantasy land to even believe it. And this is not the first time this has happened, and this is not the first time they've pitted two movies against each other, and blamed the lack of success of one on woke politics, and attributed the success of the other to no politics. And that was couple years ago with Sonic the Hedgehog movie versus Birds of Prey. Now you guys will know what the Sonic the Hedgehog movie is about. Birds of Prey, some of you might not have heard it. It was a female led like superhero slash villain movie where Margot Robbie's Harlequin led a team up of various heroes and villains against Black Mask played by Ewan McGregor. Apparently pretty good but did very poorly at the box office while Sonic the Hedgehog came out just a week later and did amazing at the box office. And you guys remember that Tim Pool thumbnail. Feminist furious as Sonic's success proves gamers right. Of course, feminists were not furious about this. I don't know where these people even find these people outraged that Sonic would do well when Birds of Prey did bad. And this one is even more ridiculous because Birds of Prey and Sonic would not be competing for exactly the same audience. Birds of Prey, I think, was a 12A. Sonic is a children's movie, right? So although there'll be a crossover of older teenagers who might want to go see a video game movie based on Sonic the Hedgehog, there are lots of people who would go see Birds of Prey who wouldn't pay attention to Sonic the Hedgehog. And why one did bad versus why one did well is so easy to see on the surface. It's because one is a children's movie based on a very popular property. One is a more obscure part of the DC universe. In a cinematic universe, that has been really hit or miss, and it's more vague, so people didn't see it. Did not stop conservatives politicizing it, so let's have a look at this montage I made 
for my video on this about a year ago. Sonic the Hedgehog has come to theaters this weekend, and we are seeing some really, really weird tactics being deployed by the SJWs to do whatever they can to tear down this movie because they are still, they are so butthurt over the fact that Birds of Prey did not do well in its opening weekend, and they are terrified of Sonic the Hedgehog. I've actually seen the movie myself, saw it on Valentine's Day alone and I really enjoyed it. So they left the door wide open and Sonic just ran right through them. In fact, you've had these Birds of Prey fans, uh, fanatics really on social media, trying to do damage control for the movies. We're talking about Birds of Prey. We're gonna give our review of Sonic, but this is what we gotta start with because this is very, very important. Check this out from Cosmic Book News. Birds of Prey fans sabotaging Sonic the Hedgehog. This is this is legit, <laughs> but, I'll, but I'll tell you why. It's very simple, Forbes. The success of the new Sonic the Hedgehog movie shows that Hollywood needs to listen to gamers. Boom. <gasps> Heavens. Because gamers, they, they don't mess around. They, and look at they this. They have a high quality of, of stuff they like to, to play. Well, they're, they're, the, they're the customers, man. Yeah, exactly. Check this story out. A Birds of Prey hashtag is trending with solid reasons to support Harley Quinn's movie. Not only were people sick of all this feminist girl power anti-male BS in the movie, but also another bigger name and better picture and a more entertaining project was on its way to release one week after Birds. I'm of course talking about the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. I think we can all easily see why this movie was on track to knock down Harley Quinn and the Birds from their tenuous top spot at the box office. Pro SJW feminist fans of Birds of Prey they saw this coming early on too, and that's why they tried to slander Sonic preemptively online, calling the film offensive, bigoted, and just making stuff up in order to try and turn people away from that movie, because now more people just want to see Sonic because of that baloney. And also, there's just not that many Birds of Prey fans out there to begin with. Am I willing to believe that there were probably like one or two self-described feminists on Twitter complaining about the Sonic movie and complaining that people should have gone see Birds of Prey instead? Yeah, maybe like a tiny amount of people. I'm not willing to believe this was such a thing that SJWs were going crazy because no one was seeing Birds of Prey and everyone was going to see Sonic the Hedgehog. Please let me know in the comments, do you know any fandoms like this? I can't even imagine this happening on Twitter. Maybe I live in a different like Twitter bubble where I could never see this happening, but it seems so bizarre to me, but it is bizarre and it obviously makes no sense. And although with this case, it's not as overtly sinister as a lot of the Disney stuff, or even a lot of the broader culture war waged by conservatives, it does show you how they will just either exacerbate things that aren't really an issue, or just straight up make things up and adopt different things as part of their culture war. So now according to conservatives, Minions and Sonic the Hedgehog are anti-woke, anti-feminist films because they don't talk about politics and they're for the fans, where Birds of Prey and Lightyear are the height of leftist filmmaking because they include diversity and representation. Again, an argument that doesn't really hold up to any scrutiny. Do these guys actually believe it? Well, I think Ryan Kinnell and Geeks and Gamers are like conservative zealots. A lot of anti SJW nerd channels just see what these guys are talking about and parrot it, and they say the most, I guess, you know, generic things about these movies to help them wage the culture war. But of course, it's just getting more and more bizarre. And it's bizarre even in mainstream politics, talking about, you know, Ted Cruz and Ben Shapiro ranting about Sesame Street. These guys getting outraged about a Buzz Lightyear movie and celebrating a Minions movie and celebrating Sonic the Hedgehog for being anti-woke. It's just a timeline that is increasingly tiring to live in because as they're getting more bizarre with their culture war attacks, the world is getting worse and worse every single minute of every day because of this capitalist hellscape we all live in and especially for americans where a lot of this culture war is waged america is literally sliding into ultra conservative authoritarianism while these guys celebrate that but get outraged about a same-sex kiss and light year which lasts about a second again it's just a massive distraction from the issues but what i will say is these things are so bizarre, I think they do provide an opportunity for maybe people on the left to point out how generally these people's worldview is like a fan fiction of reality. What they're mad about doesn't matter, the narratives they create don't exist. And I know a lot of you people, a lot of people have told me, thanks for helping me like stop watching these channels, thanks for helping me like get out of that mindset. So I'm hoping more people watch content like this 
and realize these people don't really care about any of this stuff. It's all to make money. Or if they do care about the politics in general, they will latch onto stuff to push a political agenda by making up cultural narratives like Minions versus Lightyear or Sonic versus Birds of Prey. Anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Subscribe. Follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter, on Instagram. Check out my Patreon. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.